these gods nowadays are largely forgotten uh, simply because people don't have draft animals anymore. That's right, so the gods that the protected dragons. them are no longer necessary. Today my guest is Professor Meir Shahar from the University of Tel Aviv. He's a well-known authority on Chinese religions and has written a number of fascinating books. And today he has just delivered the lecture on the Indian origins of the Chinese beef eating taboo. And so we're having this conversation after that lecture. Meir, thank you for agreeing to talk with me. And I'd like to ask you a few questions about your research. What is it that you work on right now? Uh, sure, uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Imre. I uh, have been working for several years now on the gods, the Chinese gods, that protect draft animals. Uh, we sometimes forget it, but our ancestors all over the world, not only in China, depended upon animals for their livelihood. Uh, animals, uh, whether horses, donkeys, mules, camels, oxen or llamas, were the motors of the pre-modern age and these animals needed divine protection. Just imagine a poor Chinese peasant who plows the rice paddies in South China. Uh, usually a Chinese peasant in the South owned no more than one buffalo. And his entire household depended upon this one buffalo for a living. If the buffalo fell ill, an entire family might go hungry. So there was a god who protected buffaloes and oxen. This god was called Niu Wang, ox king. You might translate it also as Buffalo King, and he protected bovine beasts of burden. So uh, my research focused on this god, Niu Wang, but I also researched the, another god who protected equine draft animals, that is horses, donkeys, and mules, and this god was called Mao Wang, namely Horse King. I'm using the past tense uh, uh, because these gods nowadays are largely forgotten. Uh, simply because people don't have draft, anim draft animals anymore. That's right, so the gods that the protected them are no longer necessary. And uh, when I go in China and I tell people about these gods that protected draft animals, many of them haven't heard about them. Okay. So, so there were two gods, one called Mao Wang, uh, horse king, who protected equine beasts of burden, that is horses and donkeys and mules. And the other was called Niu Wang, protecting bovine uh, beasts of burden, that is oxen in North China and buffaloes in the rice paddies of South China. Nice. Okay, so is this book done? Is it coming out? The book is done. Uh, whether it will come out depends upon the readers for the press. But yes, it's done. Do you want me to talk more about it? <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. So what is the next project then? Because you should be already working on something else, I assume. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm destroying your <laughs> your interview. You, you, you can decide. To, you know, you, you're not reco obviously. You, you will choose from. You will cut and choose from what we are talking. Yeah, but this is this is fun. This is so fun. Yeah, we can go. On. We can yeah. go on. The truth of the matter is that I'm not sure what I will, will be working on right now. Uh, I have a big project, funded project titled "Environment and Religion in China." The idea is to study the religion of the Chinese peasant in relation to his environment. That is to say, such gods as the two I just mentioned, that protect draft animals, but also perhaps gods that protected crops, gods that battled locusts, um, so gods that controlled the weather, uh, anything related to the peasant and his environment and uh, his needs vis-a-vis uh, -vis the environment. So these are agricultural gods, really. But um, this is the, the area. But, but as I just told you, and we are, I am also very much interested in translation, and I might be translating, who knows, uh, the COG, the Journey to the West, into Hebrew wow. from Chinese. But I'm not yet sure. Okay, okay. So going back to these peasant like gods or sort of peasant religion, you're focusing on peasants. What about sort of more organized types of religion that, let's say, the state is involved with? Uh, actually, you? actually, you're right. Actually, you're right. I emphasize when you, just now. I, I spoke about uh, rural gods, but actually, uh, the horse king in particular, the ox king, the Niu Wang, was really worshipped only by peasants, because or almost only by peasants, because these were only peasants who relied upon these beasts of burden. But the horse king protected horses, donkeys, and mules, and these animals were used. We'll soon go into details not only by peasants, but also by merchants and industrialists and 
government officials when it comes to horses and the military. Yeah, the military. The, the military. Yeah. So in fact, the horse king, unlike the ox king, enjoyed also very lavish uh, government uh, patronage. Uh, in fact, beginning in the Ming Dynasty, each and every Chinese army base also had a temple for the horse king. He, he was really the tutelary deity of the Chinese cavalry. Wow. Okay. So, so he was worshipped alongside other military gods such as Guan Yu or, or, uh, or others. So is this worship of the horse king actually in some way, did it spread to the north of China? You see all, you have all these groups, nomadic groups in the north of China. I, the truth of the matter is I don't know. I haven't done work really on the Mongols or Manchu outside of China proper or I, I don't know. Okay. I, the truth is that I don't know. I'm not sure. Inside China, the horse king was worshipped by peasants in the north, because in the north, the donkey was the principal draft animal. He, the horse king was worshipped by merchants all across China. And the preferable draft animal for merchants was the mule, and the mule was protected by the horse king. And government officials and soldiers worshipped the horse king all across China. Yeah. By the way, the courier system, yes, the postal system. So in fact, every courier station, postal station, was also, was also a, a temple for the horse king. This is starting from the Ming or already in the Yuan? I'm not sure. My, 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 I think only in the Ming. I think okay. only in the Ming. But for sure in the Qing period, I mean, what do you mean by temple? The, the, the room, the office, was a temple for the horse king. And that's also where the paperwork of the station was done. And... Uh, in the stables uh, next door, the protégés of the horse king uh, resided. Yeah. Okay, and they were taken care of. They were taken exactly. care of, yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, so thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me and hope to see you very soon again. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you very much.